Hey guys, this is Dr. B. This is a video to show you how to do the uh, lab report um, for the tick pathogen work that you did. Um, first thing is it's a little different than what you've done before, but we're going to start using this format for the rest of the course and also for molecular biology. So I'm going to go over exactly kind of what you need to do. And I'm also going to post an example paper of the format as well. So basically you're going to read through this. It's exactly how you're scored as far as points. Um, everything in red is definitely stuff you want to pay attention to more so, but please read all of it. So here's all the points that you are given. Um, all of these things kind of tell you about what each part is. Um, and there's the title page. I don't need to go through that. Just read through the abstract, do what it says. Intro in, uh, to the introduction, basically, um, you know, what are we asking in our study? Uh, in this case, obviously, we're testing um, ticks for uh, species of Ehrlichia. Um, so you want to definitely include that in your uh, intro. Um, and here's a little bit more specifics for the intro. You want to make sure, like I said, you include background on the tick and the pathogen. The tick we test is called the Lone Star Tick, otherwise known as Amblyoma americanum. And the pathogens that we tested were Ehrlichia chaffiensis and Ehrlichia ewingii, and they both cause Ehrlichiosis. So you need to give a background of that in your introduction. As far as materials and methods, um, again, you want to talk kind of about what you did um, in terms of uh, the procedures and whatnot. So you don't necessarily need your lab notebook because I put in there um, the cyber green instructions from the company, uh, as well as uh, how you did the DNA isolation from the tick. Um, however, if you do want your lab notebook, you are more than welcome to come in and, uh, and get it if you need to. Um, another thing I want you to include um, is you're going to need to use the SNAP gene account that we gave you. Um, you're going to need to identify in this the target amplicon with, from these primers. Um, so if you recall, we were testing what's called EC3 and EE2. EC is Ehrlichia chaffiensis and EE is Ehrlichia uringii. And these are the uh, NCBI uh, codes right here. So when you go into NCBI, that's the gene. Um, these are the primers. Um, and basically from this information in this part of it, you are going to answer in there what, um, well, I don't know why this is doubled. I need to delete that. Um, what the gene names are for these. In other words, what is this gene? And then also once you find it, um, how long are each of the fragments that they amplify? And then you're going to paste a picture of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up, um, uh, snap gene and I'm going to do this for a different gene. So let me just move over here. Um, and just open up my snap gene. So here is me opening my snap gene. <clears throat> Sorry for that. Okie dokie. Um, and I'm going to use uh, from a different paper uh, this uh, right here. So I'm just going to choose, uh, again, this is not the code that you're using. You're going to use um, your own code. I'll go ahead and copy this. And then again, Import, NCBI sequence, paste, and it's going to open up this, hopefully. There we go. All right, so uh, just to make this a little bit larger now, let me uh, go ahead and expand this for you. So I've already answered the first question. I can see the description of this is, uh, this is the Babesia microti, microti sorry, uh, ribosomal RNA gene. Um, and so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go down to the uh, very bottom here. Let me move this down um, and say basically sequence. And so there is the whole entire uh, sequence. And so then what you're going to do is you're going to go back to um, the primers that I gave you. And this is, again, I'm using different ones, but you're going to do the same thing. And this is forward primer, so I'm going to take this top one like this. I'm going to control copy. And then I'm going to go here and hit primers, add primer. And I'm going to paste it. Boo! And it's going to see it. But then what you have to do is you have to go way down here and say add primer to the template. Okay, then you're going to repeat for the other one. So you're going to go ahead and pull the reverse primer. Control copy. You're going to go back to the same thing, primers, add primer. And you're going to paste, and it's going to find it as you can see. And then you're going to say add primer 
uh, to template. You may want to note where it is. Notice it's around 1710. Boom. So now I've uh, done that. And if I go down to 1710, we can see here that this, is, which is kind of cool, um, this is from here. Let me just highlight this. All the way to here, that is the Amplicon, because it goes, as you can see, from the beginning of the forward primer to the end of the reverse. And you can see also that it's 99 base pairs long. So this is what you want to snap to. You'd want to take a picture of this section just like this with both the primers. And obviously the answer, if this was the one, would be 99 base pairs. So that's this is what I want you to uh, be able to do to understand why we chose those particular locations that we chose. So let's go back now to uh, the lab report format. So this is again, as you can see, in the materials and methods part. Don't forget again to include real-time PCR, how it works. Um, basically also CyberGreen, um, what that did in the master mix as well, how that works. You want to include all that stuff. Um, then you have the results section, and this is where you're going to include the entire class data. You're going to summarize what it shows, and basically what you're going to say is what percentage of ticks uh, that we tested carried either form of Ehrlichia. Um, and also, don't worry, I'm still fixing these little typos. Uh, and you're going to also paste a copy of the graph that shows the real-time results, but not the huge Excel file. So let me show you what those two files are. First, you're going to obviously go to Shared With Me, Research at Delaware Tech, Genetics, there we are, clicking away. Tick pathogen lab uh, and class data. You'll see this is new. There'll be three things in here. Um, right now you see two, but the third one is the actual lab uh, report document that I'm literally um, showing you right now. So uh, in terms of what you do and don't want to show and what, how this works, the first thing you want to look at is this thing. Um, and this is... Um, and you can make this larger, of course, if you wanted to do that. Let me just go ahead and uh, control plus on this to make it larger. Um, but this is Monday's data. And you can see here that the, all of these lines are flat except this one right here. Um, I wreck a couple late bloomers over here, but it kind of shows you that, whoop, there it is right there, C12. Um, that one was positive. Um, and so you'd have to be able to kind of say, oh, what was that? And here's the data from Wednesday. Um, all the lanes and whatnot. So if you want to include pictures of these graphs, that's awesome. The second thing that I wanted to, to look at, which is a little more um, important than just the graph, is the results, the actual data here. So this is, um, and you can open this if you want, which I would do, and to do it, you can open this with Google Sheets, which is basically the same as Excel. Um, and what you're going to see here is some really cool data. This is what the machine spit back. Um, and you can see here also on the right that those are the names of them. EC3 is a liquid chaffiensis and the E2 is a wingy eye. And so basically this is what you guys put in each well. This is the sample. This is the target. This is the dye we used. And now this is the part which is really cool, um, where it'll tell us which ones came back positive. And anything that says the word AMP came back positive. So therefore... Sample 3 that was put into well B3 is positive for Ehrlichia chaffiensis. Um, as we go down, there they are, there they are. There's another one that's positive um, for Ehrlichia chaffiensis. So anything that's inconclusive, we do not include. Um, and these numbers, by the way, have to do, which is very important, have to do with the CT value, it's called, um, or the CQ, either one. And basically what those are is that is the... Um, cycle in the PCR process where this uh, curve was considered positive, where it started to go up. And so that's the data for Monday. Here's the data for Wednesday. So using that, you're not going to include this graph. Don't include the graph. I want you to talk basically about um, the percentage of the ticks that you tested that um, that came back positive for it. Look, actually, this one here came back positive for you, wing eye. You can see right here, it says AMP. So that's, that's what you're doing is you're summarizing that data to tell me what percentage of the ticks that we tested came back positive for um, Ewingii. So if we go back to um, this, that's kind of what we want you to do um, is understand that. We want to see what percentage of them came back the way that they did. So, and then moving down the line, you can read how to do the rest of the stuff if you can do a graph or whatnot. 
Um, and then in your, your discussion, um, what does the research say should be the percent of ticks infected with uh, both of these guys? And that's where you're going to need to do a little research and look up what the normal, some studies that have been done that look for um, this particular tick called Amblyomma americanum and what percentage of the ticks tested they found had these particular amounts of organisms. So that's kind of what we're doing. The last thing, obviously, is references. Please don't miss the points here. Um, references is very important. You have to do an APA format. And so there's a whole bunch of things you can use to do that if you've never done it before. Um, you can do Citation Machine, which is one, um, or any of the other ones, and you're going to do APA format um, for any of the research, and you can kind of say, hey, was it a website? And then from there, you can go ahead and put in the information um, to go ahead and uh, like give this a shot. You can either put in the keyword for it. It'll help you to do that. Um, so this is kind of where you would do it. Uh, if not, you can also ask your English instructors as well, or you can ask me. Um, so basically, that's it. Um, this shows you how to do it exactly. If you have any questions, um, let me know. The lab report is not due for two more weeks. Uh, today is the 1st of uh, November. I had to redo the video from yesterday. Um, but uh, it's due the 14th, so basically where you would upload it, obviously, you upload assignments here. If you scroll down, you're going to see Tick Pathogen Lab, and you're going to go there, and you're going to... Uh, uh, upload it there. So on that note, good luck and uh, I'll see you later.